Hi, Robin here. This video is one in a series introducing structural equation modeling. In this video, I'll demonstrate how a correlation can be modeled as a simple regression using Onyx, the free SEM modeling software. I'll create an empty model by right mouse clicking anywhere on the Onyx window and selecting Create New Model, Create Empty Model. I'll now select the same two variables that we used in the previous video, word, meaning, and cubes. You can select several variables from the list by holding down the control key. Once the two variables are selected, hold down the right mouse button and drag them both to the model window. By hovering the cursor over these observed variables, you can see a list of their summary statistics. The double-headed arrows entering and exiting each observed variable are their estimated variance, the square root of which is their respective standard deviations. I'll now consider the Q's variables as an input, that is the independent variable, and the word meaning as the output, the dependent or criterion variable. In contrast to the last time, we are not going to draw a correlation line between them now, but a regression line. That is a single arrow instead of a double arrowed line. I do this by first considering the originator, holding down shift key and dragging it to the target variable. Prediction is the core idea of regression. Here we are implying that the word meaning score is predicted to some extent by the cube score. In other words, its value is partially dependent upon the cube score. Unfortunately, the cube score only imperfectly predicts, and this imperfection is modelled by addition of an error term, a latent variable. We do that by selecting create latent variable, and now we have our latent variable. In this context, you can think of the latent variable as representing a mop, soaking up the difference between the predicted and actual scores. We now link the error variable to the outcome variable, just by holding down the shift key and dragging from the error latent variable to the word meaning variable. The complication of the latent variables is that you lack a clearly defined scale. We solve this problem by either setting the path from each of them or their variances to a set value. I'll do this by setting variance here to 1. Incidentally, when you set a variance to a value of 1, it's a fixed value, it's not shown on the diagram because that is the standard. I now set the line between the error latent variable to be fully estimated and also the regression line um, between word meaning and cube to be uh, estimated. You can also get Onyx to display the standardized regression weight by clicking on the pop-up menu and then selecting Customize Path, Show Standardized Estimate option. Because in this instance it's a simple regression model, the standardized value is not only equivalent to the beta weight, but also the simple regression between the two variables. So here is a value of 0 0.19, which is a correlation between cubes and word meaning. Looking back at RR code, you'll see that's exactly the same value. Notice also at the top right hand corner there is a triangle symbol which represents an error message. This tells us that the model can't be estimated because we have requested more estimates than there are data items in the set of summary managers on which the model bases its computations. The problem is that we have two ways of soaking up the error associated with the word meaning variable. We have the error latent variable x1 and also the variance associated with the word meaning variable. These are competing for one another, so the errors in prediction can't be uniquely apportioned to either. The solution is to get rid of one. I've decided here to delete the variance attached to the word meaning variable. I also request a standardized value for the path between word meaning and the error latent variable using the same technique as before. Customized path shows standardized. There appears to be something wrong with the toggle button for the show standardized menu item. Unfortunately, just ignoring the incorrect status mark and just clicking it seems to do the trick. The result is standardized value of 0 0.98, but before discussing this, we'll look at the diagram in detail. The double headed arrow above the cubes variable is the estimated variance for that variable. The variance is equal to its squared standard deviation. In other words, if you take the square root of that value, we'll get the standard deviation. The values above the regression line and between cubes and word meaning are known as partial regression weights or path coefficients. 
The first value, also known as the unstandardized path coefficient, is equivalent to the B value in the regression equation. You could think of such values as representing gradients between the two variables each end of the arrow, where a change in one unit for the arrow's originator indicates a change in the arrow's target of 0.31 units. The standardized version means the same thing but measured in standard deviations instead of raw units and is equivalent to the betas in regression equation. On the right hand side of the output variable, that is word meaning, we have once again two values. However, this time both indicate the degree of error from the predicted score. In onyx, the value in brackets here represents the square root of the standardized residual variance, the SRV for short. The SRV is important because it tells us how much of the variability in the original data is not explained by the model. Here we have the square root of the SRV being equal to 0.98. So this value squared represents the SRV, which is 0.96. That is, over 95% of the variability in the two variables is not taken account of by the model. Considering model fit directly, we know that R squared value represents such a measure. Also, R squared is equal to 1 minus ESRV, and we already know that the square root of the SRV is 0 0.98. So 1 minus this value squared represents the R squared value. That is, 1 minus 0 0.96 is equal to 0 0.04, which is also the R squared value. This is slightly different to the value of 0 0.037 obtained by directly calculating R and then squaring it in R, but that is because we didn't carry out precise calculations. This R squared value of 0 0.04 indicates that only 4% of the data's variability is accounted for by the model. As I mentioned before in the regression equation. You can think of it as being a shaded area in a Venn diagram alternatively to a regression equation. A truly pretty poor result. Do you remember that the value in brackets near the error term, the square root of the SRV, is something we desire to be as small as possible? Our aim is to create a model that minimizes this value and thereby maximizes the R squared value. Think of the two as being opposite ends of a seesaw. We have seen how the simple regression model and the correlation between two variables is basically equivalent here. Do you remember that the p-value, which was highly significant at 0 0.000746 here, is to do with the degree of difference between the two models discussed in the previous video. This is a desired result which gives us pleasure, but in contrast to the actual correlation value, and more importantly, the squared value of the correlation, which can be thought of as the percentage of covariation between the two variables, which here was around 4%, a very low value. A p-value is really nothing more than a function of sample size and effect size, where the effect size here was the actual correlation. Because we had a low correlation, but a large sample size, we got a significant p-value. If it had been the other way around, we would have got a significant p-value. If one of those values had dropped, we would have got an insignificant p-value. Remember that. P-values are not everything they're crept up to be. We'll now move on to the t-test. And remember, you can get more details about these subject areas in my book, How Science Statistics Using R and R Commander. Bye for now.